Now we're going to create a brand new report from Sage Intelligence using Report Manager. We're going to use the new table that we created previously in the connector, which gives us our GL chart of accounts information with net changes for each fiscal period. So when you open up the Report Manager, you will see um, if it's not opened up already, you can uh, double click on the home and that'll bring up your tree. The report manager is organized in a series of folders, some which come with the product and some which can be created by you to organize your reports. So we're going to use this Agora folder. I'm going to double click and you can see some of the reports that are already in there. So I'm going to click on the toolbar and choose Add Report. So what is this? It's going to be a standard report, which in this case is just a single report. A union report would be where I combine multiple standard reports and create them so they run out on a multi-tabbed uh, Excel spreadsheet. So you might have your detailed transactions on one tab and your trial balance info on the other. So I'm going to click OK and I got to give it a name. So this is going to be GL uh, Net Changes and that'll be fine. So I'm going to click OK. Now I have to choose a table or a container rather. The containers come up. These are all the containers that are created and exist in your connector. Some come with the product and the others are ones that you make if you own the connector module. We're going to use the table we created previously called GLNet Changes and then it has the table names, accounts and account fiscal sets. I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to choose my columns. Now, if you looked at the connector video earlier, you would remember that we renamed the fields so that they would be easier to use when creating a report. So I'm going to click Account ID. Um, I'm going to click Description. Fiscal Set Designator. No, I'm not going to click that because I don't actually need that to show. Fiscal Year and then all my net transactions. So we're going to click all of these and of course my opening balance and I'm going to click OK. So now I'm going to highlight the new uh, report and on the right hand side you've got all sorts of tabs which gives you more information about your report. So uh, the first one is properties and you can give it a little better description if you want. So I'm going to do that. Lists, accounts, description, and opening balance, and all net changes for selected fiscal year. All right, so now we're going to go to the columns and you'll see listed, well I have to save what I just changed, the new description. So here we are, we've got our columns and you can see they're in kind of a weird, um, they're in a little bit of a strange sequence. So I'm going to move these guys up. It looks like I've got a typo here that I'm going to have to go into the connector and fix. You see I've got two net period fours, so we'll fix that in a bit. I have a feeling one of them is actually net period three. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to multi-select and move the whole block up. So now we've got all of our fiscal sets and I'm going to bring the uh, opening balance. That's going to be my first uh, column. So now what we what do we want? Um, I think I only want active accounts, so I'm going to choose active and is equal to I'm going to click on the ellipsis and I believe active is one. So I'm going to choose that. Parameters are like filters. It is used to restrict your output, but it's set up so that you make the choice at runtime. So I'm going to go and I'm going to add a parameter for my fiscal year and it's going to be equal to, 
I'm going to put in a default and you can change this default at the beginning of each fiscal year. And to change, all you have to do is right click, choose properties, and then you would just edit that appropriately. Now if you were doing a parameter on a text field, such as maybe your departments, what you would do is you might want to choose your parameter input text case to be uppercase only. Because the data is stored in uppercase, you would want to make sure when you're inputting your parameters that you only get the uppercase because otherwise uh, you might get no data when you run out your report. And this just makes it easier for the person running the report. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to sort and we're going to sort it by account ID. Whoops. Click and select OK. All right, so now since I found that I had a mistake in my connector, this gives us a chance to see how to fix that. So I'm going to jump back into the connector in Sage Intelligence. And I'm going to double click on Enterprise, double click on SQL Server, Sage Pack Auto Connect, double click on that. And I'm going to find the table that I, the the container that I created earlier, and it's this one here. I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to find where I've got multiple period fours and I can see that this one's correct because the SQL statement is net period four. This one, however, is net period three. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to rename it and I'm going to fix it to three and then I'm going to go ahead and go back to the report manager. So going back you should see we're going to delete these two columns and I'm going to re-add them and that should refresh it. So I'm going to add Hopefully it's been refreshed and it has. Here are my two fields. I'm going to click OK. So now you know how to fix mistakes. And I made another one. So I'm going to remove this one and I'm going to add the appropriate column. There it is, three. So now I'm going to just move this one up and I'm going to select both of them and move the whole thing up into the appropriate location. Whoops. All right, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Fantastic. Now we're going to test the report. We're going to run it out. So I'm going to highlight the net change report and I'm going to just choose run. And on the right hand side, my parameters are going to come up. I'm going to leave it at 2016 and I'm going to click OK. And it's executing. And there we go. So this looks pretty good, but now we're not quite where we want it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these columns, all of my numeric columns, and I'm going to set them to comma. So now we've got, that looks a lot better. And, you know, maybe I want to make it, give myself a little nice looking heading. So I'll just make that blue, maybe make these fields bold. I can see here's the account ID. And I might want to freeze the columns so that as I scroll down, so I'm going to freeze the top row. And now as I scroll down, you can see that the top row is fixed. And we can do other things like format the account to make it look a little better um, and that sort of thing. But well, that, that's all we're going to do for now. So I'm going to come back to the report manager and I want these changes to, to remain. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my GLNet changes and I'm going to choose Save Excel Template. 
and I'm going to choose the open Excel report that exists on my desktop and that's the one that I want. So if you have multiple Excel reports open make sure you pick the right one or it's just not going to work. So I'm going to click book one I'm going to click OK. It's going to warn me that parameters are on the second sheet and it needs to clear the workbook in order to save the template, which is fine. So what do I want? I want the Excel 2007 and higher uh, template, which is this one here. And I'm going to click OK. The default is to use the same na name template name as the report which is strongly recommended and I'm going to click OK and notice it's clearing the Excel sheet and it's linked to the report. So now next time I run this report GLNet changes I'll hit run. I'll accept the default fiscal year and let it run out and you will see that the formatting changes that I made with the frozen titles, the comma separate, the comma format, and the heading are all now they remain. And that is how we create a report in Sage Intelligence Report Manager.